The Big Date Now, most of the time, we all could use a bit of help from our friends. But have you ever had a day, when you wished your friends hadn't tried helping you? My cousin Dan sure did. Let me tell you about it. See, cousin Dan was pretty lonesome. Most ladies don't want to have nothing to do with a fella they can't even look eye to shin with. He only had to go on one date with a woman, for it came clear it wouldn't work out, no how. Well, his friends decided it'd be a right shame if he didn't find himself a lady friend, and figured they'd help him out. Rearview Eddie'd spotted a woman nigh as large as Dan was when he was making his rounds o' the world. He asked her who she was, and she told him she was Libby Marigold. Eddie explained as how he had a friend who was bigger and she was, and how he'd like to introduce them. Libby was amiable to the idea, and so Eddie took her picture, and ran off to tell the boys. When he saw that picture, Dan felt his heart beat faster and a drummer stuck in a light socket. Libby had hair like corn silk and eyes like fresh coffee. He wanted to go straight off and say his how you deuce, but Slick Hopkins stopped him. Now, Dan, he said, you can't just go courting a woman in your overalls and work boots. You gotta wear something sophisticated, like they got in the city. Dan allowed as how this was true, but he didn't have a good suit to wear, and tailoring one to his size wouldn't be easy. Slick called in fifty tailors and set him on an old circus tent. A week later, they had a right nice suit on their hands. Dan was just about to go off and say his hellos, but Dudley Marner said that Dan needed to get himself a nice bouquet. Women like flowers, Dan, he said. Get her a real nice bunch of em, so she knows you'll like her. You go without some flowers, and she'll think you're a right bumpkin. They picked a few flowers, but they kept getting lost in Dan's hand. Even sunflowers were mighty puny looking with Dan holding em. Dudley had an idea though, and he got fifty politicians together, speechifying in the rose bed, and what with all them political words dropping down, they had themselves rose bushes nigh as big as redwoods, a week later. They picked off a few of the roses, and soon had themselves the nicest and the biggest bouquet you ever did see. The thorns from the stems were painted orange and used for traffic cones. Dan was all set to go, but then Benji Harper piped up, you can't go without your having a gift for her. Lady folk can be real particular about that sort o' thing. Dan nodded, but what the heck was he going to give her? If she was anywhere near as tall as Eddie had said, a gift would have to be pretty darn big to suit her. Benji said he'd got himself an idea. Lady folks, he explained, liked sweet things to eat. So, he got fifty cooks to put together a big old cake for Dan to take with him. The rest cleaned up the junkyard for cardboard, and put together a box for Dan to carry it in. And it didn't take them more than a week to get it all together. So finally, Dan was ready to get going. He had on his nice suit made of circus tent, the bunch of roses in his hand, and the cake under his arm. He just set off to meet with the girl, when he felt something what chilled his blood. Rain. Not rain such as you and I get, but the real stuff they got in Deadwood Valley. This stuff don't just clean the earth, it washes behind the ears. This rain was hard and fast. In five minutes flat, it did as much as most rainstorms do in a week. Dan didn't have time to rush back indoors, as he was caught right out in the open, and got the full force of it. When the air cleared of water, Dan was standing there with his suit soggier and a frog's newspaper. The roses was down to the stems, all the petals having been washed right off. The cake was a squashy mess inside a box, what felt it was gonna break any second. Dan was looking mighty dejected, and trust me, a man his size has a lot to look dejected with. He'd been hoping to meet up with a lady, but he knew he couldn't possibly go see her looking as he did. 
he'd get laughed clear back to Deadwood. He was feeling so sorry for himself, he didn't even look up, until he felt someone tap him on the shoulder. This was a new experience for Dan, as most folks needed a ladder and a team of Sherpas to reach him that high. He looked up, and who was it but the lady herself? You big Dan Brown of Deadwood, she asks him. Um, yes em, um, Dan said, looking away. You sorry son of a polecat. Libby shouted, grabbing one of his ears. You know how long I've been waiting for your ugly face to show itself. Three weeks I've been waiting, and not a word do I hear, about this mystery man who's supposed to call on me. You folks don't got calendars here. Ow! Now you see here, woman. Dan said, pulling his ear free. Some things gotta wait for their own time. I'm a busy man, and I can't just drop everything, just to call on some woman. He straightened up, which normally put his ears out of harm's way. Unfortunately, Libby was much closer and most folks, and she could yell down thunder. Don't you take that tone with me, Dan Brown. Now, you gonna start courting me, or am I gonna have to tan your hide? They've been together ever since, and ain't stopped arguing once. And I swear on John Henry's hammer, that's the gospel truth. This content is Creative Commons. Relevant attribution can be found in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button, if you enjoyed this video.